Hi there, a quick video, sort of a repair. One of my longtime supporters, Dave, asked me if I could help making this thing work correctly. It's a clock, but not an ordinary one. It's a scope clock that you need to connect to an oscilloscope in XY mode. The kit came with an already programmed RT-Mega328. Dave just added the battery holder for the button cell to keep the time going during power down. His full description is that the image flickers and the clock runs 20 times too slow. I wasn't very successful to see anything on my digital scope. XY mode is hard for digital scopes and, as with many less expensive ones, the XY mode on this Rigel isn't great, which is one reason why I have practically never used it. I moved to my vintage analog scope, but I had not used XY mode on that one either and only later I did figure out how to set it up properly for this gadget. Anyway, it's clear the board is working, sort of, but very flickery and if you watch the second hand, you can witness the slow update. One tick every 20 seconds. The point is that obviously the AT Mega 328 chip driving this is running at an internal 1 MHz clock instead of the 20 MHz crystal oscillator on the PCB. Dave sent it to me to reprogram the chip to fix this problem. I did fix it by studying the fuse bits on the AT Mega 328 in the datasheet which is a book of 445 pages, and setting them correctly. Only much later I found this paragraph on the frequently asked question page of the maker of this board who had actually rounded up all the necessary information already. The FAQ goes over many, many pages, so I missed that initially. Incidentally, the information available on the website is first class, well worth a visit. After the reprogramming, the clock runs at the correct speed and the flickering is gone too. Obviously, the image refresh was also running 8 times slower than now. So the quote repair was actually finished already, but since it's kind of unusual, I decided to showcase the clock a bit before sending it back. And I finally sorted out how to use my scope in XY mode and since the firmware menu contains a demo, I think you may be interested in seeing what it can do. Here we go. The first part is mostly about different options you can set in displaying your clock face and what information like date or day of the week is shown in addition. Ignore the blinking P, I'll cover that later. A binary clock for the geeks under us who don't mind running a binary clock on an analog vintage scope. An interesting contrast. I will cover what LED time does a little bit later. This is the cal or calibration screen, very useful for setting up your XY mode so that both X and Y axis are the same length and in the center of the screen. Terminal allows you to use the scope as a serial terminal. And vector graphics allows it to be used as a display for some historic video game. Note that the game itself is not in the clock's firmware. A flashing B indicates that the backup battery for the real-time clock is failing. A flashing G indicates that the GPS time differs from the real-time clock. Burn-in prevention means the scope image jumps slightly to a different location every couple of minutes. The time interval can be set. And finally, the clock understands NMEA GPS messages coming in on the serial port. If you connect a GPS providing NMEA messages to the serial port and set the GPS mode in the menu, the clock will automatically use that information to set date and time. Every couple of seconds, you see a G on the screen. This indicates that the GPS times differ substantially from the real-time clock. This should only happen once, or very rarely, but the fact that it happens all the time indicates that there is still a problem with this clock. Let's have a look at the schematics which can be downloaded from the Dutch Tronics site. Unfortunately, the light coloring makes it difficult to read. I hope this works better. Here we have the real-time clock or RTC, a PCF8563. The RT Maker uses two I.O. ports to set and read the time and date via I2C. The RTC has its own crystal of the usual 32.768 kHz type. There is a socket where one can plug in a backup battery supply. 
The clock is fed via two Schottgitter jets, either from the onboard power or the backup battery. So far everything is very straightforward. On pin 3 the RTC provides a 1 PPS signal. 1 PPS standing for 1 pulse per second. This signal is pulled up to VCC via a 10K resistor and goes to one pin of a connector labeled 1 PPS. The other pin of this connector goes to an input on the RTmega. Rather than continuously interrogating the RTC via I2C, the firmware in the RTmega implements a software clock. It is set initially from the RTC and then relies on getting the 1 PPS pulses as clock ticks, so to say to advance the software time in sync with the RTC. If the firmware does not receive a 1 PPS, it fakes one and that causes the flashing P on the display. The fake 1 PPS is not terribly accurate, so if a GPS is connected, the software clock and the RTC are initially set to GPS time, but because of the inaccurate fake 1 PPS, the software clock soon differs sufficiently from the stream of incoming GPS time messages that it has to be corrected. That causes the G flashes on the screen. Before leaving this schematic, I want to point out that the intention of the 1PPS connector is to allow either the RTC's 1PPS or an external 1PPS from a GPS to drive the software clock. If no external 1PPS is available, then this connector should have a jumper across its pins, so the RTC's 1PPS can reach the RTmega. But if an external 1 PPS is to be connected, it must only be connected to the upper that is pin 1 of the connector and pin 2 must be left alone. In particular, it must not be used to connect the ground of the external 1 PPS source because that would short the RTC's 1 PPS output to the GPS ground. There are sufficient ground pins elsewhere on the board for an external 1 PPS. Now, the first observation is that this one PPS connection is indeed shaped like a connector and the second is that there is no jumper. The fact that this looks like a connector is very unfortunate because it is very tempting to simply make a cable that carries the external one PPS and its ground and plug it into this connector. That may have bad effects on the RTC and as pin 2 isn't really a ground, the external one PPS may not work either. I did put a jumper in there, but the P kept blinking and measuring the 1 PPS from the RTC showed no pulses were generated. Also the RTC's crystal oscillator was not running. Conclusion, either the crystal or the RTC chip are dead. The chip could well have been fried by a careless 1 PPS connection as explained. I removed the jumper again and plugged a plus 5V square pulse from an external function generator to pin 1 with ground plugged in elsewhere and the blinking green LED indicates that the RTmega received the 1 PPS. The scope showed that the forever blinking P was gone, so the RTmega and the firmware part of the 1 PPS stuff works just fine and it's really the RTC that has a problem. Just for fun. If I increase the frequency of my external function generator, I can make the clock go faster. Since Dave had spare RTC chips, we agreed that I sent the board back to him to complete the repair. He reported that it took two attempts to find an RTC chip that worked in that the 32.768 kHz oscillator runs and the RTmega can set and read the time and battery backup works. What doesn't work yet for him is the 1 PPS because with a jumper in, the threaded P is still blinking in his display. Dave reported further that with the one RTC chip that appears to be working, there was a 1Hz signal on the clock out pin 7 of the chip which is connected to a pull up resistor but otherwise not used. But int, which is pin 3, was consistently high, no pulses whatsoever, whether the one PPS jumper was in or out. So it looks as if the third RTC chip is also at least partially damaged. I suggested to add a patch wire from the clock out to the 1 PPS input. This is not quite the same as a 1 PPS which is supposed to have a falling edge when the next second starts. The 1 Hz on the clock out is just a divided crystal frequency so the time change on the screen could be up to one second early or late. With that patch wire feeding a 1Hz from the RTC, Dave reports his clock is now working as it should without a flashing P. 
Oh, and before I forget, I wanted to explain LED time. It simply means that the green LED on the board is showing the time in Morse code. I leave it for you to decode it. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe becoming a Patreon. That would really help the channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.